Now I want to switch to NATO and foreign policy. You just returned from Lithuania uh, from the NATO summit. Um, what was, just first, very broadly, what was your reaction? What did you learn there that you didn't know before? There were six of us, bipartisan delegation, three Democrats, three Republicans. Gene Shaheen of New Hampshire, Tom Tillis of North Carolina led our uh, bipartisan visit. It, it meant a lot to me personally. My mother was born in Lithuania. I saw Lithuania during Soviet times, the sad state of affairs. And to think now that it was a gathering place for the freedom-loving uh, countries from the Western world uh, really was a tribute to how far that country, that little country has come because of their determination to be free. But what happened at that conference was significant. It was the worst week so far for Vladimir Putin because the NATO alliance grew in strength and number and determination to defeat him in Ukraine. And secondly, we had other countries come from around the world. The Republic of South Korea, its president, we met with him, as well as the prime minister of Australia, we met with them as well. So it was a gathering of freedom-inspired uh, leaders to make it clear to Putin that this conduct in Ukraine is absolutely unacceptable. And I want to give credit where it's due, and, and he's been uh, very shy and humble on this category, uh, and that's Joe Biden. The fact of the matter is NATO alliance was on the rocks when he became president. The member nations really seriously asked him, what is the future of NATO? We've listened to Donald Trump, and we don't know that it has a future. And, and this president, Joe Biden, said, I believe in NATO. I'm going to make it stronger. And with Ukraine, he has really proven that point. NATO is stronger than it's ever been in history, and thank goodness it is. It is averting uh, disasters like uh, Ukraine by its very existence and commitment to stand together for freedom.